Another question I get a lot is, what was it like when you got your first look at the planet Earth from space? And for me, this took a little while, because I was on the mid-deck. I was downstairs in the space shuttle, and there's only one window down there. It's in the hatch, and it's in the corner. It's about the size of a dinner plate, pretty small. And as soon as you get to space, you have a lot of work to do. So I was working really hard, and about 30 minutes went by, and then suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I saw this pale blue glow coming from that little window. And I said, whoa, that's the Earth. I should go have a look at that. And I expected a really transformative, a kind of a, a transcendental moment. And I paused and I collected myself. I kind of meditated a little bit, closed my eyes, and I readied myself. And then I floated up to that window, and I opened up my eyes, and I gazed for the first time upon the Earth from space. And what I felt deep, deep inside of me was best summarized as, eh. <laughs> it was nice, it was pretty. You know, it had a lot of those earth colors, the blues and the greens and browns, but it looked like that. It looked like, like that picture up there. I mean, you've all seen pictures of the earth from space, and now we got HD video coming down of the earth from space. It's beautiful, right? Yuri Gagarin, John Glenn, those guys didn't know what to expect, but we kind of knew what to look like, and it looked like what I expected. I didn't, I expected maybe there'd be some kind of heavenly choir, and I would hold my crewmates' hands, and we'd sing Kumbaya and pray for peace on earth. I expected something monumental, and it just wasn't there. <laughs> you know, I, I, some astronauts went up, and they came back, and they said, from space, you see an earth without borders. Well, really, what'd you expect to see? Like, dotted lines between all the countries, <laughs> labels, maybe they'd be color-coded, like Rand McNally, right? You've all flown to Canada and stuff. You, you, when you look out and cross the Great Lakes, you don't see a dotted line. It says Canada. No. So it looks like you expect, you know? So that was a little bit of a disappointment. But looking down didn't really affect me very much. But what was really impactful I was looking to the horizon. So look at this picture. If you look at that horizon, you see that thin blue line that separates the sunlit Earth from the black void of space. Who knows what that is? Anybody? All right, I heard somebody. It's the atmosphere. Yes. Look how thin that is. When you see that with your own eyes, it's really shocking. It looks incredibly fragile. It looks like a gust of wind can come by and just strip all that air from the top of our planet. I mean, geez, it's a vacuum on the other side, right? So that was kind of scary. And that's all the air we have to breathe is in that thin blue line. So then I had another thought. About a week later, I'm looking out the window again, and I'm looking at what you see most of the time, which is the oceans. I'm looking down at the ocean, and I thought to myself, how deep is that? Now, the deepest part of the ocean, like the Marianas Trench, that is about 35,000 feet deep. And that's the deepest part, OK? So what I'm telling you is that it's an order of magnitude difference. That thin blue line is about 10 times thicker than the deepest part of the ocean. So now, if you start thinking about the planet that way, it really changes your perspective. When you look out the window of the shuttle, that the Earth fills up the entire field of view. It's a huge planet. But the part that matters to us is this tiny little surface coating. If I say Earth, if we play a little word association, if I say Earth, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Trees, forests, rivers. Well, all those things are somewhere between the bottom of the ocean and the top of the atmosphere. So everything about the planet that matters is in this tiny, little surface coating with the dimensions that are equivalent to like the skin on an apple or the shell on an egg. So if you think about the Earth that way, it's actually very small. It's very fragile. And it's something that we are completely capable of messing up. And in fact, we've been destroying it for quite a long time now. 
And if we don't do something about all the greenhouse gases we're putting out into this atmosphere, we're in big trouble. And if you see that with your own eyes, it's pretty hard to deny it when you look at the science. So I just want to leave you with that, that we really need to take care of this planet. It's the only spaceship we got. We are the crew. And if we don't take care of our ship, we're in big, big trouble. So that was very impactful. Thank you.